So hyperprogression is uh, a new phenomena and uh, it's defined by patients who are getting checkpoint inhibitor uh, immunotherapy who have a very significant acceleration in the rate uh, that their disease uh, progresses. Um, so I think it's very important uh, to recognize this phenomena because the checkpoint inhibitors have been such transformative drugs. And uh, they've been transformative because we've all seen patients with very advanced, very aggressive metastatic disease who have gone into complete remission, and these complete remissions can be durable. Uh, so uh, to me, these are still the best drugs uh, that have ever been invented for cancer patients. But that doesn't mean that they don't have a downside. And so it was a real surprise to us when we began to notice um, that there was a subset of patients that actually seemed to have their disease really accelerate in its aggressiveness uh, once they ch st started the checkpoint inhibitors. The numbers are inconsistent uh, depending on the study. We know it's a minority of patients. In our own group, it was six patients out of 155. Uh, so that's probably about 4%. In other study groups, it's been higher. Anywhere from 9% to 29% of patients um, have shown uh, some degree of hyperprogression. And um, the degree that there is an accelerated progression may also depend on the criteria that people are using to define what accelerated progression is. So let me start by uh, giving you our own criteria. Uh, so the criteria for hyperprogression was, first of all, that the time to treatment failure was less than two months. And that's a very short time. We know that doctors don't like to pay, take patients off immunotherapy because some of the results have been so good. So when a doctor takes a patient off immunotherapy in less than two months, their hand has been pressed to do so. And the scans are showing very dramatic changes. Um, the other criteria was at least a 50% increase in the tumor burden. And the final criteria, which was probably the most important, was at least a twofold increase in the pace of progression. So that required a scan two months before starting immunotherapy, in addition to a baseline scan right before immunotherapy. The reason that's important is because that indicated to us that there was a change in pace of progression. Some uh, people who um, have some doubts about the existence of hyperprogression have said, well, maybe these patients' disease was aggressive to start with. But we ruled that out because we would not call anybody hyperprogression unless we had that baseline two month period before to show that there was a change in pace. It had to be at least twofold increase in the pace of progression, but in some of our patients it was 35 or 40 fold increase in pace. It could be really dramatic. The other thing that happened was the first two patients that we saw in the clinic, uh, we noted something uh, unusual about them, and that's that both had MDM2 amplification, MDM2 being a gene that's involved in cancer, and amplification means extra copies of that gene. The reason that was a strange coincidence is because MDM2 amplification occurs only in about 4 or 5 percent of patients with cancer. So at that point, we thought we should look um, more deeply to see if this was real. And we looked at 155 patients that we had with available data um, to uh, determine what were the, the genomic correlates of hyperprogression, were there genomic correlates. And we did what is called a multivariate analysis, which is a statistical analysis that rules out any confounding factors. And what we found was that indeed MDM2 amplification was very strongly correlated with hyperprogression. 
And the other gene alteration that were correlated with hyperprogression was EGFR alterations. It was already known that EGFR alterations could correlate with resistance, but we found that a subset of these patients with EGFR alterations also hyperprogressed. For us, we're not just talking about EGFR alterations in lung cancer, where it's commonly known, uh, but EGFR alterations can be found in other tumor types as well. And so a patient with an EGFR alteration in a non-lung lung cancer, I don't know that normally there would be a hesitation about putting that patient on an immune checkpoint inhibitor. Uh, but our data suggests that there should be caution for those patients. So I think the other aspect of our research um, that might be relevant is that we took blood samples um, serially from patients every two to three weeks um, to look at something called uh, the liquid biopsy, which is circulating tumor DNA. And what we wanted to know is could the amount of circulating tumor DNA tell us whether the patient was hyperprogressing ver versus something called pseudoprogression, which is when it looks like there's progression, but it's not real progression, and the patient will eventually respond. Differentiating those two is actually really important because in one case, you really want to stop the immune checkpoint inhibitor if the patient has hyperprogression. With pseudoprogression, you don't want to stop it because the patient will eventually respond. And what we found when we looked at the circulating tumor DNA, again, just taking serial blood samples, is that the amount of tumor DNA increased in our patients with hyperprogression, but in our patients with pseudoprogression, the amount of tumor DNA in the blood actually decreased. It's still a small study, but I think it indicates that additional research is warranted because if we can do these serial blood samples and that can be enough to tell us the difference between a pseudoprogressor and a hyperprogressor in the clinic, that differentiation is extremely important.